I get asked the same questions about VS Code over and over and over again. No, seriously, over and over again. So in this video, I'm gonna answer the top five most frequent questions that I get about VS Code. All right, the cool thing about this is I can tell people out there, hey, don't ask me this question anymore. Go and watch this video. That's what this is intended to be. But these are questions that are literally so common, I felt like I had to create some content directly around them again so I can have that place to point people. So I've got five questions that I'll walk through, and a lot of them are fairly straightforward, especially if you've done any customization with VS Code, but I'll show you the answers to those. And then at the end of this video, I'll give you a couple of additional resources that you can go and check out for some VS Code help. So the first question that I get, question number one, is what font am I using? And for a long time, depending on when people ask this, the answer is differently or different because I switched fonts about six months ago. So for the longest time, I used Fira Code, which is a, a free font that you can get. Uh, it comes with font ligatures. We'll talk about those in a second. And uh, you can search uh, Fira Code, F-I-R-A. Uh, you can go to their GitHub. You can download what you need. Once you have that installed on your machine, you go into your VS Code settings and you check the uh, font family and you go for Fira Code. And that's basically it. There's not a whole lot to it, but it is a really nice font. Now, I used Fira Code for probably three years or so. And at a certain point, I was like, ah, I'm just kind of looking for something a little bit different. And someone recommended to me Cascadia Code. Cascadia Code is from Microsoft. It is also free. Uh, you search Cascadia Code, you download it in much the same way. And then you set it up inside of VS Code in the font family setting as well. So basically the same type of thing. So depending on when you when people have asked me, it was either Fear Code or Cascadia Code. Now one other font, both of those are free. One other font that I've been really interested in and I've never actually spent the money, but it just sounds so cool is Dank Mono. Dank Mono is either 20 or $40, I can't remember. And it's not like typically I'm so cheap, I would never spend money, but it just looked really cool. I love the branding of it with the word Dank, it's cool. Um, anyway, so if, you, if you're looking for a cheaper paid font, Dank Mono could be a really good option there too. All right, the follow-up to what font do I use is how do I get those fancy characters on the screen? And this is, uh, well, I guess first, let's start with these are font ligatures. So font ligatures will take things like a triple equals and they will convert them to three bars on top of each other. They will take a double equals and convert them into two bars on top of each other. Uh, so kind of put some things together. They have them for arrows and things like that. I think they're really neat. I think it's probably as a content creator, not the best decision for me to use them in my videos because I've also gotten questions like, well, how did you, what character is that? Not people not knowing that that's literally just like equals and bracket to do an arrow because it combined it into this special thing. So I think it's probably not the best idea for me to do it, but I just love them. I enjoy them so much. I like them in my code. So I've made a decision and continue to do that. And people will ask about them all the time. So the way you set this up is you will have to uh, install a font that has the ability to have font ligature. So both Fira code and Cascadia code that we mentioned a second ago, both have those enabled. So you can have font ligatures with that. Uh, then you go into VS Code, enter your settings, check for the font ligatures, chet setting, chetting, setting. Uh, turn that on and you should be good to go. Now, if you type a double equals, a triple equals, um, an arrow, things like that, they should be converted to those really special, cool characters. You can tell your friends you're the coolest developer because you have these special characters that they don't know about. Not really, but it is kind of cool. That's why I continue to use it. All right, the next question is about my terminal setup. So I've got um, what I think is a pretty good looking uh, terminal setup. And I would love to brag and say that I came up with the colors and I came up with these little icons that are in here and I did the color scheming for Git status and that sort of stuff. I would love to say that. The answer is that I've, I didn't do any of that or I didn't make up any of that. I didn't come up with any of that. So here's what you do. You Google, you search for command line power user by Wes Boss and then you do everything that he did, and that's what I did, is basically what it comes down to. But I can't tell you how many people are like, oh, how did you get those colors? How did you get the icons or the colors uh, tied to get status? How did you get the icon that's in there? It all comes from the command line power user uh, course. I say course, it is a course, but it's a free course from West Boss. So you can search that, follow all the steps, and you'll have exactly what I have in my terminal. I thought about uh, maybe creating a dedicated video of walking through that. In some ways, I feel like I'd kind of be stealing from West Boss and maybe I could create a video and just say like, here's a few steps and then go to that thing for the for the full uh, instructions anyway. 
Uh, my terminal is pretty sweet. His terminal is pretty sweet. That's how you do it. Command line power user course that's free from West Boss. All right, the next question is uh, the blinking cursor. Uh, and I think I've kind of turned this off and on depending on uh, different times in my code, but it's just a cursor that blinks. And it's a fairly simple thing. The cool thing is this is just a setting inside of VS Code. And here, if you ever ask a question to me or to any anyone else about, oh, how'd you get that in VS Code? Well, try searching for that inside of settings first. So if you open up your settings in VS Code, it's got a great search feature. If you search cursor, you'll see that you have like a cursor style or something like that. And you can choose to make it be blinking. Uh, you can change the width of it. You can change a few different properties of it. So you can customize that yourself right within the settings inside of VS Code. So any question you have, start with settings, I think is the moral of the story. Then you can ask a content creator. And then if enough people ask a content creator, they might create a video like this, who knows? All right, the last question I get is what theme am I using? Uh, and I have gone through a few different ones. The reason is on my Twitch streams, I have a command for chat to, for people in, in chat, not twat, in chat to be able to change my VS Code theme. So because of that, I have a few that I cycle through and they're kind of random. So different videos have different themes, which is actually kind of fun. Uh, if you're interested in hanging out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash James Q Quick, there's a link below to that. But uh, which theme do I use? Primarily, I use the Cobalt 2 theme, which is from West Boss. And that matches well with the terminal setup that I have, again, because all of that comes from his, him and his color scheme. Cobalt 2 is my primary one. Uh, there is also uh, the syntax theme from Scott Talinsky. Scott Talinsky and West Boss run the syntax podcast. He also has a um, level up tutorials syntax version. Excuse me, did I say? I think it should have been level up tutorials theme first and then the level up tutorials syntax edition from Scott Talinsky. So those are two of the ones that I use. I also like uh, Night Owl from Sarah Drasner, Shades of Purple from Ahmad Awais, and then Winter is Coming is another one that I liked from, um, from John Papa from Microsoft. So there's a few different, uh, few different themes. There's tons of them. I've got a video on VS Code themes. If you wanna go check that out, you can learn more, uh, but there's tons of them. Just search for themes, find out ones that you like, and then just put it on there and have fun. All right, so those are the top five questions that I get asked on this channel about VS Code. Figured it'd be easier to just make a video about it than answer them individually. Uh, so I told you I would leave you with two additional resources in here. Uh, one is I have a free VS Code cheat sheet. So if you're looking for shortcuts and customizations and things, I've got a free VS Code cheat sheet with a link up here. I'll have a link to that in the description below as well. And then additionally, if you want to know everything there is to know about VS Code, I have a full course going through everything you might need to know about VS Code, including all these customizations, walking you through step-by-step -step and a ton more. So if you're interested in that, I've got a course on Udemy uh, with a link below as well. So you can have the free cheat sheet and then you have the option to pay for a full course if you're into that kind of thing. If not, no worries. Anyways, I hope that that helped answer some of maybe your questions or at least the questions that other people have had. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know, uh, maybe, let me know what additional question you have about my VS Code setup or VS Code setup from someone else below. Put that in the comments, let me know. Uh, and then if you enjoyed the video, like it, subscribe to the channel, comment below just to say you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate that, it helps with the algorithms and it helps me make more videos. Anyway, I appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.